Hello and welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you're coming back. Well, I am so lucky that one of my subscribers, Rhonda, asked to see some sort of a life painting of this, uh, the last uh, picture that I posted that was inspired by Lisa Wang's barista paintings. And I just didn't want to paint the same painting for the third time, so I just went out online and found a new composition painted by Lisa Wang, and she is uh, painting barista scenes. So this time I thought that, hey, why don't I try one where there's like two people and not one? So this is the motive that I choose to paint in honor for Rhonda. And thank you so much. It's It just really warms my heart that there's someone out there watching my little silly channel and then wants to, to see more about this uh, painting process. So uh, here we go. I'm working on uh, Archer's paper, 300 GSM, one of my favorite paper supplies actually. And this time I am using uh, paint from Daniel Smith. Mostly the ultramarine blue and the yellow ochre. We got some some black that I mixed up from using red, blue, and orange, I think, and then burnt umber also. So basically, like down to a minimum of four to five uh, colors, and then to add in that punch plus color, I tried this violet. It's a crinacridone violet from uh, Daniel Smith. Uh, I don't know if I like it or not. I just thought that you could mix some beautiful shade colors if you had the violet in your palette. So I wanted to try it out. Well, um, you are in for <laughs> 24 hours. <laughs> of uh, just uh, on and off working. I think I worked in total five to six hours on this one, counting the sketching, but it was spread over 24 hours. So we have like different daylights in the recording and sorry for that. Uh, I think I used uh, more than an hour sketching this in because I was really unfocused and not concentrating. So I erased a lot. And I think that because I worked on arches that I did not erase away the sizing of the paper. That's one of my um, issues when I'm working on lesser, lesser paper quality. When I need to erase a ton from creating the sketch, I sometimes can see it when I start painting. There are these areas where it kind of looks like I erased off <laughs> the sizing of the paper. But um, yeah, lucky you guys that I don't show you the whole sketching phase. It was like a Peter. I really wish that I was like super good at drawing because then I could pass over the sketching phases so, so much easier. But I think making these paintings will give me more um, training. So hopefully with years to come, uh, I will get past the sketching phase. I, I kind of realize the more I paint, the more important it is to have a, a cool sketch when you start because it makes the painting so much easier that you don't have to correct something while you're adding paint to the what you're doing. <clears throat> so I think um, I'll try and focus more on the sketching phase when I'm doing my drawings. And I find that on this one, I did what I would call like a one-line sketch, where I only had like sketch outlines on the previous Lisa Wang uh, composition that I made. I used a lot of striations to tell myself where to put in dark values, and I thought that the striations would be covered because I'm going over it with like super dark black or something like that. But it turns out that uh, I must be pushing too hard. So the striation leaves uh, tiny marks on the surface of the paper that the paint kind of puddles into. You can see it when you're standing up close, but I bet that you won't even notice when you're seeing it 
uh, shoot in a footage like this. So this is the first um, sketch drawing that I have made where I've really been focused on that one line sketch and you know I think that's the way to go for me. Well, um, what to... Uh, <laughs> I really dislike these voiceovers. I end up babbling about stuff and making it like a vlog style instead of just uh, taking you guys through the painting session. Um, yeah, what to what to say? We're still watching Tour de France and it's turning out to be very, very interesting. We got a Dane in the yellow jersey. And uh, just like last year, I am totally sucked into this uh, Tour de France. It really surprises myself that, and then not, because you know what, I tend to have the same behavior when the Olympic starts up, especially the Winter Olympics. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, this year has been different because, um, yeah, to hit the then the head on the nail oh my god I gained so much weight the past three to four weeks it all started you know it's like really we had like three weeks of drought and hot summer when Tour de France like really started up so I think I can recall someone saying that Besides needing you, you need to drink a lot of of water. It's also good to you to switch to something which that's like sugary, like soda, and also remember to eat some salty things. So chips and and soda was suddenly you know in my mind when I was shopping. So there was this uh, ridiculous offer, like three giant bags of chips, and I took that, and then. <laughs> the soda was on sale. I bet it was because of the summer. So I bought like four huge uh, soda. And I thought that that stash would last for a long time. But guess what? I find that if I'm really excited and kind of nervous when I'm watching something that has a duration of four to five hours on TV. <laughs> I can totally just eat a lot. I just sit and eat. So suddenly this uh, habit about drinking soda, eating chips and eating all healthy stuff in front of the TV while watching these guys sweat and work like pigs on their bikes just has turned into a really cruel habit. We have binged eaten a lot of things oh my god <laughs> we also ordered some things for the store and then we had the optional of choosing a free gift because our order had a certain size and one of the gifts was five kilos of Haibo candy that's a Danish brand and because we had so much uh, I know it's stupid you just I sit, I sit and eat it like uh, on a, a, a long uh, automatic thing where I'm like constantly chewing on something while I'm watching the, the guy's bicycle and uh, yeah it's just oh my god it's so bad yesterday oh, we had bananas but okay, my hobby is also really a bad enabler when it comes to eating gross stuff Yesterday we uh, we wanted to do banana split. Or maybe I should talk about our day first. You know, Tour de France starts at one o'clock. You know, at noon. So we are getting up really early, like six thirty. We are already working, and that's several hours before our normal routine. But we have to uh, get up hours before and start working to be able to free up time to sit from noon till five o'clock in the afternoon and just watch this uh, Tour de France. So um, we get up pretty early and uh, I just can't really uh, eat breakfast for some reason when I get up like super early. So uh, I just push along my workday and it's kind of a little bit hectic uh, to walk noon because I want to be finished, you know. So when Tour de France starts on TV, none of us has really like had lunch or anything. 
and um, days where I didn't even have breakfast. So I kind of fooled myself to think that, oh, because I didn't eat breakfast or lunch, I can really snack extra. <laughs> and then suddenly it just turns into these meal things. So uh, yesterday my hubby, he, we were eating banana split and it was like really gross. We decided the day before that we wanted to have banana split. So uh, we went shopping, right? And then we needed some ice cream. And then it turns out that there are these really disgusting <laughs> new ice cream uh, in our supermarket. They took like four Danish cakes and make them into uh, ice cream. One of them is Snuffle, Helmone, Brunsvier. What the hell was the last one? Oh yeah, Skum Banana. I don't even know how to translate this. But we're talking about like like brownies, cookies, like... Um, not like pastry, but you know, like like a sponge cake that they made into ice cream. And I cannot pass stuff like that. I need to taste it and try it out. <laughs> Just like when they invented the pizza burger. I thought it was so disgusting that I had to buy it and taste it for myself. So I went home with those four really ridiculous flavors of ice cream and then we made um, banana splits and oh I, I just ate so much I feel so guilty I really need to go on a diet as soon as this Tour de France is ending because I gained so much weight so yeah why am I even airing this out <laughs> to YouTube I don't know but oh my god can you remember a couple of years ago I also wanted to lose some weight and uh, back then we had that digital scale in the bathroom and it was really fancy it was this glass plate resting on tiny legs and then you had to tap it with your toes to make it start up and i got so frustrated with it because uh, if you stepped on it on the edges you could like it felt like you were flipping it like a skateboard you know <laughs> so <laughs> I, uh, I remember when it then landed back, you messed with the setting of the scale, so suddenly it was showing your weight in pounds and not in kilos, and it was just a Peter man. So what I said to my hubby was like, I, w I just want to throw this modern scale <laughs> out of the window, and then um, I want to go back to that old school scale with like uh, an arrow showing <laughs> the the amount of kilos that you weigh, you know, like old school with a platform that's totally connected to the ground that it's standing on, nothing fancy that can flip on you if you step on it on a on a on the side of it. So he went out and uh, got myself, yeah, he's so cute. I mean, he I swear to God, he must be related to the tooth fairy or something. But he went out and granted my wish and came back with this old school scale with that needle um, showing you how much you weight, right? And, um, okay, I have to tell you this before I continue. It was this old school thing that if you flipped it around, it had this gear in the back where you could manipulate the setting of the scale. So you, you can push it to weigh less or more before you step on it right and then my hubby and my son they were so evil they wanted to play a prank on me so every second day they would turn up that gear to show one more kilo you know like add a kilo each day <laughs> and i did not realize that because you know after they invented the the push-up bra with that steel bearing I haven't seen the tip of my toes ever since they invented that bra. <laughs> so I just step on the scale and then after I'm standing there, I'm looking down to see the, the shock, you know. So uh, I, was, I was going like, okay, that was strange. I gained like one kilo since yesterday, but okay, it could be fluid, you know couple of days after I was like damn it's so difficult to lose weight you know and, and still like almost like gained like one and a half kilo and then two kilos 
And then I ate a lot of wet vegetables because uh, I was kind of on a diet because I wanted to lose weight. And I got so bloated up by these wet vegetables, like my stomach just felt like like this huge, I don't know, beach balloon, <laughs> you know, I just couldn't even close my pants. I just got so bloated up. So I didn't really think about it when I gained those five kilos, but then I started to be like really pissed. And then one day I was like, you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to stop this losing weight project because I'm, I really have fucked this up because somehow I managed on three weeks to gain 15 kilos. And how is that even possible? And I remember standing in the kitchen just like almost in tears <laughs> telling my hobby like, how, how is this freaking possible? I mean, I, I swear I... I I, I totally regret that I didn't wrote anything down, you know, took notes of every, of everything. But I, I wanted to, to tell him that I freaking gained 15 kilos in like two and a half weeks. And I think that was like mind-blowing and how how is that even possible? Um, you know, <laughs> I've been making all sorts of excuses to myself. Like, uh, oh, it has to be something to do with about full moon, having more gravity and suction, playing, messing up with gravity on Earth or something. You know, I was really out there, you know, like <laughs> trying to find excuses. And then it turned out that they were pranking me, adding on those extra kilos. <laughs> oh, my God. Such creepy people to live with. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this time I know that I'm... Um, I'm going to try and then uh, go back to that uh, vegetable diet after this Tour de France is over and then just see if I can uh, do something about it. Yeah. Oh my God, back to my painting. What are we doing here? Yeah, I can see that now I'm working on the face. I think I messed up uh, the woman's uh, face a little bit. Maybe I, I think I... I, I would have done it differently if I could redo it. Um, I would have turned her head more so that you didn't need to see so much of her lip area because uh, I, I didn't manage to put in any lips on her. I tried in the end, but uh, I removed it because it, it just looked weird. <laughs> so but yeah, what you have been seeing here is just uh, slowly building up layer by layer by layer. I try to work with uh, a black color for the barista uniform. And then I mix in ultramarine blue with the homemade black that I made to get the, a different kind of temperate shade for, for the shading in the surrounding, you know, their workstation. Um, yeah, I was really thinking about, oh my God, I want to make my own composition because now I'm using Lisa Wang's composition, but it could be fun to make my own composition. But I don't really go to Starbucks. Uh, I have no clue how their machinery looks like. And then I'm thinking, I never really noticed how the workstation looks like in a cafe. I only focus on, you know, my coffee. So I, I think it's embarrassing to take pictures. <laughs> so I went online and tried to, I wanted to find uh, somebody who have taken a picture, you know, of a coffee station. And then I realized that the uniform, the modern uniform, is actually looking like an apron. Some of them in leather. That would be crazy. So I think the next thing I want to try out is to find this um, cool reference photo and try and work from that. But um, yeah, we'll see if I get the time for that. So <laughs> I was also thinking about... <laughs> Do anyone remember the British TV series, 40 Towers, with John Cleese? You know, he's like a hotel manager. Oh my God, it could be so fun to paint John Cleese behind his uh, hotel reception desk with that 
bell on the desk and then Manolo in the background, you know, the the waiter. <laughs> because he is dressed in white, so I would still get the opportunity to have that bright white uniform. And um, John Cleese, he always had his suit on, and I think he had like a butterfly, but sometimes also a tie, but I seem to recall that in one of the episodes he's also wearing a, a butterfly, and uh, I think I could make the the suit, you know, it's not the, it shouldn't be that difficult, but unfortunately he likes to wear like dark umbra color suits, yuck, <laughs> so, plus he's got that Hitler mustache, so I probably would uh, mess up the painting and make him look like Adolf Hitler instead because of the mustache. But I definitely want to give that a try. Also to change out the surroundings because if I painted 40 Towers hotel desk space, I would have the opportunity to have that background with that nice furniture where they display all the room keys and you could have like um you know oak furniture with the uh, small drawers in you know like an uh yeah i don't even know the word for it a danish you would say like a boutique como like um you know like one of those wooden old school furnitures at pharmacies with all the small drawers and um, I would love to make a background like that because that fills the background with warm colors and warm tones. And then you could come with a person painted in front in more cooler tones. Because what I have learned about this painting style is that if you want to paint something that's very close to where you're looking at it, it has to be like more cool tones and then warmer tones are good to use for way pushed back backgrounds. So I think that's why I also mixed in the ultramarine violet, the the crinacodone violet uh, with some warmer tones for the background and then just kept it in its cool nature on the desk surface of this painting. But yeah, it's just a feeling that I got. I'm not sure that it's validated into some facts. I don't know. It's just a, a feeling. And we're having fun, right? It's just for fun. This is not something that I'm going to, uh, you know, hang or use or anything. It's just a, a big waster of time. No, it's not. I, I'm actually having a quite a... I'm really pretty good entertained while I'm making these. What's going on is that I'm listening to audiobooks while I sit and paint. That's why I like to do a sped up version for the things that I upload so you won't have the audio in the back. Plus I don't have, you know what, this took me maybe like four hours to paint. Imagine if I had to talk for four hours. <laughs> I would be entering a lot of areas really not worth listening to. <laughs> so just doing this uh, 25 minutes uh, voiceover is giving me problems. But hey, if you listened so far, I just want to thank you. You are a trooper. Thanks for watching this far to the end. And Rhonda, I hope that I granted your wish about wanting to see some more live action and not just uh, ta-ta, here's the finished <laughs> result uh, kind of upload. So, um, yeah, if, if uh, you want to see this slower on the gear on YouTube, you can slow the pace down and see it. I sped it up four times in this recorded version. So, um yeah but uh, thank you so much I will end this uh, stream by showing some um, close-up footage of the finished painting so you can
see see it close up. But let me just uh, fill out the the void the next half second <laughs> before <laughs> this footed edge. So the drawing is finished. I really like that table. I think it's nice with all the highlights and let's see close up footage of the faces. It's always like super critical to get the face facial expressions the way you want it. Oh and my Achilles heel is the hands, but I think on um, this one that yeah it looks like I'm getting better and better at doing the hands the more I do of them. Hopefully that made sense. Yeah, I really like this uh, this painting a lot and I love that I tried out that purple hue. It gives it, um, I don't know, I just really like that purplish um, color mixing in to this composition right here so yep thank you for watching i wish you would have a, a nice day and uh, see you soon bye bye